Let's look at two more example problems where we have these special right triangles. And this triangle is going to be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now we're not told that explicitly. We are just told that the measure of angle N is 30 degrees. So we can figure out what the measure of angle O is by just setting up a relationship between the angles here. So we can say the 30 degree angle plus that missing angle, angle O, plus the 90 degree angle is equal to 180. And if we subtract 90, that's 90 on this side. And if we subtract 30 more, that brings us to 60. So we can figure this out. As long as you know two angles, you can always figure out the third. And now that we know we have this 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we can use the relationships between the side lengths of these types of triangles. So let's look at a very generic example. Let's say we have some random 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And remember these right triangles are always half of an equilateral triangle. So if we drew in the other half, we'd look something like this. And the triangle we have is exactly half of this bigger triangle. And remember that equilateral triangles have the same side lengths. So if this is x, then this would be x as well. And this entire bottom would be length x. And since we split it exactly in half, this side here and this side here, these are equal. In fact, they add up to become x, so they each have to be x over 2. So this short side in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is always half of the hypotenuse. So right away from that, we can answer the question. This would be double this length. This would be 16. And if we wanted to know this length, mn, which we can maybe call the height of this, remember based on the pattern, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that the middle side length is always the square root of 3 times by the short side length. So this would be root 3 multiplied by x over 2. So if we really wanted to find this, we take our short side and just multiply that by the square root of 3. And you can check that this makes sense by using the Pythagorean theorem. So you can say that 8 squared plus 8 root 3 squared is equal to 16 squared. And just simplify to make sure this makes sense. Since 8 squared is just 64, if we're squaring this, we're multiplying it by itself. So 8 root 3 times 8 root 3. So we get 64 times the square root of 3 times by the square root of 3, which we can just make the square root of 3 times 3, or root 9. And this is equal to 16 squared, which is 256. And again, we're just simplifying. Hopefully, if we did this correctly, these would add up to 256. And square root of 9, that's just 3. So we get 3 times 64. Or in reality, we're adding 64 four times. We have three of them here and one more here. And four times 64, that is 256. So this does make sense, which means we can feel more confident that these side lengths that we filled in are the correct ones. And again, it's all just based on this pattern and recognizing that a 30, 60, 90 triangle is half of an equilateral triangle. So let's look at one more example. And we're just going to use this pattern once more. So let me draw a quick picture and write in the pattern again. So we know based on this pattern, if we have, let's say the long side, we can call that length D, that the short side is half of the hypotenuse. And the middle side length is going to be the square root of three times bigger than this side. And again, if you're not sure where the square root of three comes from, set this equal to some letter and then use the Pythagorean theorem to relate this in terms of this side length D. And you'll find that this would be the square root of three multiplied by D over two. Or in other words, it's the small side multiplied by the square root of three. So we can use this pattern here to answer questions about this triangle. And again, we're only told one of the 
angles besides the right angle. So this is 30 degrees, but again, we can figure out this has to be 60 degrees because they have to add up to 180. And we're also told that the short side is six times by the square root of two. So since this is the shortest side, it's the one opposite the smallest angle, we know this is half the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse would be 12 times the square root of two. Now, we weren't necessarily concerned with that, but we can use that to check our work. And to get this middle side, remember you take the short side and just multiply by the square root of three. So x would be six root two multiplied by the square root of three. And when we have two square roots multiplied together, we can combine them into one square root of their product. So in other words, this is one big square root of two times three and two times three is six. So we can simplify this to just be six multiplied by the square root of six. So this is our missing x value. And to feel confident that that is in fact the right answer, we can check this by using the Pythagorean theorem to relate the three side lengths. So we can take six root six and square that. We can take six root two and square that. And this should be equal to 12 root two squared. And this I will leave as an exercise so that you can check your work and get practice squaring these square roots. But in the end, it does work out. So this is a true relationship, which means we can feel confident that this is the correct x value.